Welcome back and today I want to show you guys about backing up between different NASes and more precisely I want to talk about R-Sync. Now I'm going to make two videos and one of these videos is going to show you how to back up um, files from a Synology NAS onto a QNAP NAS and the other video is going to be showing, you've guessed it, how to back up files from a QNAP NAS onto a Synology NAS. Now, it's very important when you go through all the stages of this because this is a very commonly requested thing uh, that a lot of people have when they buy a NAS, whether they've bought one brand and they're switching to another or they're doing it the other way around. So, so for now, let's talk about how to back up your Synology onto a QNAP NAS. What we've got here in front of us is um, the DS218 Plus and the TS251B, respectively, from those companies. Um, to go through this, I'm going to try and keep this as slow as possible, but at the same time, there is going to be a lot of delaying factors throughout the course of this video, because a lot of the time, the two devices will communicate in the background via the network, and therefore, there can be delays. So I will skip forward where possible. So first things first, in order to con conduct this swap, we're going to move over to the Synology first. You want to make your way through to the control panel. So if we get the control panel open, and then from there, we want to go to file services. In file services, we go to rsync, and we want to make sure that the rsync service is enabled. Now, technically, you won't need to do all the steps in this video. Now, we'll go through them both for both videos, but just to make things nice and easier for both to communicate, I'm gonna include all steps. So you want to enable the rsync service, make sure that's ticked. And then just for the extra layer of ease, make sure you create a user for the rsync. In this case, I'm using an admin account and I've created it with the name admin and the password is just the word password. For the sake of ease, and then if you're only gonna do this once, just create admin and password as the login for this synchronization. Not for the primary access to the NAS, but just for the case of this video. So, we've got that set up there. On the QNAP side of things, we want to make sure that hybrid backup sync has been installed. So, on the QNAP, we go to the App Center, and you want to look for an app called Hybrid Backup Sync. Once that's installed, close that down, get rid of that. Hybrid Backup Sync is completely for free and is available in the Backup and Sync applications. So once you, make sure you've got that app installed. On the Synology side of things, we can close this now, we need to install Hyper Backup. Hyper Backup Sync, look, Installed Packages. Where is it? Hyper Backup's here. And Hyper Backup, again, is a completely free application from Synology. It's very straightforward and very easy, and this is for conducting multiple synchronization tasks. So now we've got these applications installed, we can make our way through to the beginning of the synchronization. Now, both of these NASs, I've installed, I've downloaded um, onto them 35 gig of test files, the ones you've seen from my previous videos. Both of these NASs have got these synchronization files. There we go, synchronization folder there. And that was a test from earlier, so we're just going to delete that for the sake of ease. Delete that one from earlier. And as you can see, both of them have got their own respective synchronization files. The folder is called QNAP on the QNAP, and the folder is called Syn on the Synology. Get rid of those. So first things first, to send files from a Synology to a QNAP, now that we've done all of those different individual steps, uh, actually, just before I forget, do make sure that on the QNAP, you have enabled rsync as well. I'm just going to open that up. Make sure you've opened the app for the first time to enable rsync. And you want to go into rsync here and enable synchronization from a remote NAS computer. And again, if you want it to work the other way, give it the same login. So make sure you've done that there in the background. Don't worry too much about the port for now. It will give you a default port. We'll come out of that. We'll come back to that later. But do make sure you've got that enabled. Now, here on the Synology side of things, we need to open up Hyper Backup. 
and on hyper backup if we're just doing a one-off copy to carry data over in the short term we can go for rsync copy single version from here because we're not using a Synology NAS, we need to go for rsync compatible server. Make sure you remember that port. Then we need to add the port, I'm sorry, the IP of the QNAT here. Delete their HTTP, make sure it's just the port. And add the username of the device. That should be fine. From here, it is now going to search. This will be one of the many delays that's going to come across in the video, so I'll just skip forward. And now it's found the folders on the structure of that QNAP. So as you can see, it's found that QNAP test folder that we saw earlier on in that shared folder that we created. So this is going to say that we want to back up to that folder on the QNAP. Then we can click Next. From here, it will ask us which of the shared folders on our Synology that we want to back up. So we're going to go for test files sim. That's the one that is on our Synology. We click next. And it will ask us if there's any application data that we want to back up. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to select any of them. And now it's going to prepare and communicate with the QNAP to begin this setup. We're going to enable a schedule. And after that, we're going to set up this to happen for the first time. I'm just going to skip forward again because again there will be a delay while this happens. From here we can see what folders and files are being, um, uh, uh, what the name of this task is going to be on the task list and the directory that's going to be created on the QNAP, that one that we deleted earlier from the previous uh, when I was doing setup for this video. And you can enable different things to happen in the background, such as limiting the amount of bandwidth that's going to be consumed by this, as well as versions of this backup, and of course the backup schedule. We're going to leave that, just at whatever the default is. Um, and for now, you can change all of these things and encrypt or decrypt as needed. We're going to click Apply to create this task. And now we've created our task to back up the content of the Synology or the folder that we've selected, in this case those 35 gig of files, to be backed up onto the QNAP on schedule. I'm going to skip forward again, just to the point in which we can initiate this backup. And now the task is complete. It will ask us if we'd like to commit the first backup immediately. And normally I would press yes, but I just want to show you what you'll see as the synchronization. So for now, I'm going to click no. And then from here, as you can see in the hyper backup, our task has now been created. We can change it, we can edit the schedule if we want, or change the terms of the backup if we so choose. But for now, we're just going to click backup now and begin the initial backup of the Synology folder to the QNAP. So if I click there, it will initiate this backup. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to sit around and watch this whole thing happen. But I am going to show you that the folder is indeed being created and the files being sent to the QNAP. What we'll do is we'll let this start and begin its initialization. And if we have a look here, we can see the folder is already being created and things being edited. There's the time there, 1204, and that's the initial creation of that folder and file. So if we look inside there, we're already getting some of these files being sent over. And again, this will take um, uh, differing times depending on your network, the sending of these two devices from one to the other, but it is a fairly straightforward procedure and very easy indeed. Um, again, I will be doing the complete reversal of this by sending files uh, from a QNAP to a Synology, and this is definitely something a number of you will be doing in 2019. Um, apart from that, I'm going to wrap things up here. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did find it useful, do click like and subscribe and do check out my other videos about the ways to make the most of your Synology or QNAP NAS server. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.